Toad Spit was so pale that Goldie thought he was going to faint. Her own skin felt like ice, and she had to force herself to scan the ground around that terrible arrow. I, I don't think the blood is Bonnie's, she whispered. She pointed to the tell-tale marks in the mud. There were two men. See their boot prints where they ran towards her? They took her by surprise. Look, look at the way her prints are scuffed. She broke off, remembering the men who had swaggered past them. They must have doubled back and seen Bonnie come out of hiding. They must have waited until she was close enough to grab, while Goldie and Toadspit, who were supposed to be looking after her, shouted at each other. She swallowed and studied the ground again. I, I think she stabbed one of them with the arrow. It's his blood. And look, one of them has picked her up. You can see where her footprints stop and his get deeper, as if he's carrying something. Here, they went this way. Their argument forgotten, they set out to track the two men through the dark city. To Goldie's relief, Toadspit was steady on his feet again, but he clutched the bow in his fist, and there was a grimness about him that she had never seen before. They lost the boot prints many times. For all their skill, they could only track what they could see, and the light from the moon and the water gas lamps was never enough. Sometimes the prints disappeared altogether, and they had to search in every direction until they found a fresh smear of mud or a pebble kicked out of place. It was all too easy to make a mistake. Once they followed the wrong person for nearly three blocks and had to backtrack quickly. After that, Goldie borrowed Toadspit's folding knife and cut notches in a stick to show how long and how wide the boot prints were so they wouldn't be misled again. The children tracked the two men past the space where the Great Hall used to be, past the indoor markets, past the grey stone carcass of the House of Repentance. At last, they saw warehouses looming out of the darkness and the newly repaired iron levees that protected Jewel from the sea. Rising above the levees were the masts of ships. The docks, Goldie whispered. It was the first time she had spoken for more than half an hour and her voice sounded strange in her ears. The boot prints led the children to an old wooden wharf where fishing boats were moored nose to tail with their nets strung out to dry and lobster pots piled high on the decks. A mist was rolling in from the south. The stink of seaweed and fish hung over everything. Goldie could hear the water lapping against the piles underneath her and the slow creak of wooden hulls. Somewhere a chain rattled, a scrape spotted cat darted across her path like a puff of smoke. The chain rattled again, very close this time. There was a hiss of gas and an engine struggled to life. The children shrank back into the shadows, peering at the boat opposite. It was small and stumpy, with a single mast and a deck house at the back. A coarse rope net hung over its side, its engine belched uncertainly, then steadied. Toadspit's fingers dug into Goldie's flesh. It's them, he hissed. It must be. As he spoke, the engine took on a deeper note. The water swirled and slapped against the wooden piles. The mast trembled and the boat began to edge away from the wharf. There was no time to wonder if this really was the right boat. Goldie and Toadspit raced across the wharf and threw themselves across the widening gap. It was a long jump and Goldie almost didn't make it. Her fingers touched the rope net. Her mist touched again. Her right hand fumbled. Her left hand clung desperately. Her feet flailed in mid-air. Then, just when she thought she must fall and be swallowed up by the cold, churning water, her toes found the net. She clutched at it, pressing her whole body against the side of the boat and gasping for breath. Beside her, Toadspit was already crawling upwards. Goldie scrambled after him, and the two of them slipped over the rail and sank down behind the deck house with Bonnie's bow between them. Somewhere nearby, a man cried, Half speed! The boat surged, and the lights of Jewel disappeared into the mist. Ahead, everything 
was darkness.